China's defense ministry criticized the U.S. Defense Department's annual report on China, asserting that it distorts the country's security policy and military strategy. The Pentagon's report to Congress mentioned China's plans to rapidly modernize, diversify, and expand its nuclear forces, estimating that China will likely have more than 1,000 warheads by 2030. The report also highlighted China's activities in the South China Sea in diplomatic, political, and military pressure against Taiwan. The Chinese Defense Ministry expressed strong dissatisfaction, claiming that the report exaggerates a non-existent Chinese military threat. The exchange occurs amid ongoing tensions between the U.S. and China over various global and national security issues. China has reportedly launched its first nuclear-powered guided missile submarines, marking a significant development in its military capabilities. The Pentagon's recent report on China's military suggests that the modified submarines observed in Chinese shipyards over the last 18 months are Type 093B guided missile submarines. These submarines will provide China with land and sea attack options previously dominated by the U.S. and Russian vessels. The short-term impact includes China's ability to conduct long-range precision strikes against land targets, enhancing its power projection capability. The Chinese Navy's deployment of these submarines is viewed as a new capability with potential applications against aircraft carriers and as a land attack platform, allowing for strikes from a greater range. The report suggests that three of these new submarines could be operational by next year, contributing to China's expanding submarine fleet, which could number 65 vessels by 2025. This development raises concerns among regional military observers and underscores the ongoing efforts to monitor and track China's evolving naval capabilities. China's military power, particularly its fighter jet fleet, is detailed in the latest report from the Pentagon. The report suggests that China has both expanded and improved its fighter jet capabilities, with an increase in fourth-generation fighter aircraft. By the end of 2022, China's PLA Air Force and PLA Navy had 1,300 fourth-generation fighter jets out of a total of 1,900, compared to 800 fourth-generation fighters out of 1,800 at the end of 2021. The report indicates that China is transitioning to a majority fourth-generation force, with examples such as the Chengdu J-10, Shenyang J-16, and Shenyang J-15. Additionally, China has made progress in developing and producing domestically built engines, such as the WS-10 turbofan engine, replacing Russian engines in its jets. This development enhances China's military capabilities and supports ongoing efforts to upgrade and expand its assets. Chinese President Xi Jinping expressed China's willingness to cooperate with the United States in managing differences and addressing global challenges. She emphasized the importance of finding the right way for the U.S. and China to get along, highlighting the significance of stable bilateral ties. The statement was delivered in a letter at an annual dinner of the National Committee on United States-China Relations. This comes ahead of a visit by Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi to Washington, which is expected to be a key engagement before a potential meeting between U.S. President Joe Biden and Xi Jinping at the November Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC, summit. She called for stable bilateral relations built on principles of mutual respect, peaceful coexistence, and win-win cooperation. The U.S. has been prioritizing efforts to prevent the competition between the two nations from escalating into conflict. The visit by Wang Yi is seen as potentially paving the way for high-level talks and addressing concerns on both sides. Hong Kong's leader, John Lee, announced plans to create a national security law for the city in 2024, for years after Beijing imposed a similar law. In a policy address, Lee outlined measures to revitalize the city's economy, address population decline, and protect Hong Kong from external forces. He claimed that some countries were undermining China and the one country, two systems governance model. Lee expressed the need to guard against acts of soft resistance and reiterated the commitment to safeguard national security. The national security law imposed by Beijing in response to pro-democracy protests in 2019 criminalizes secession, subversion, terrorism, and collusion with foreign forces. The new law is expected to fulfill constitutional duties and combat seven security-related crimes, including treason and espionage. Lee also addressed economic concerns including measures to boost the property market and tackle the issue of subdivided units. He highlighted the persistently low birth rate, announcing a one-off cash bonus for each baby born in the coming years. 
The opposition expressed concerns about the lack of democracy and called for public oversight of the government. China has officially removed its defense minister, Li Shangfu, without providing an explanation for his dismissal. Li disappeared from public life two months ago, and his removal follows a series of axings of top military officials, including Qin Gang. Both Li and Qin were also removed from their positions on the state council. Li was reportedly under investigation for suspected corruption related to equipment procurement and development. His dismissal leaves China without a defense minister as it prepares to host foreign defense officials in Beijing. Li, an aerospace engineer, had a smooth ascent through the ranks of the military and Chinese political elite but faced U.S. sanctions in 2018. China has significantly increased its stockpile of DF-26 Intermediate Range Ballistic Missiles, IRBMs, also known as carrier killers, according to the latest Pentagon report. The DF-26, with an estimated range of 1,000 to 3,000 kilometers, can target U.S. forces in Guam and has an anti-ship role. The report indicates that China increased its stockpile from 300 missiles in 2021 to 500 in 2022. The missile's anti-ship capability, combined with the larger stockpile, could pose a significant threat to U.S. naval assets in a conflict, potentially broadening its role beyond just targeting aircraft carriers to include other ships. A group of U.S. lawmakers, part of the Congressional Executive Commission on China, has urged the Biden administration to ban seafood processed in two Chinese provinces from entering the U.S. market, citing concerns about human rights abuses. They also called for a ban on Chinese facilities using forced labor from doing business with American companies. The request is based on investigations by the Outlaw Ocean Project. Revealing human rights abuses on China's fishing fleet and forced labor of Uyghurs in seafood processing plants. The lawmakers argue that such sanctions are necessary to comply with U.S. laws prohibiting goods made with forced labor from entering the country. The move adds to previous efforts by U.S. lawmakers to restrict imports of Chinese goods over human rights concerns. Taiwan Vice President Lai ching -te criticized China over its probe of major Apple supplier Foxconn, saying that Beijing should cherish Taiwanese companies and not put pressure on them during an election. Foxconn is facing a tax probe in China with sources suggesting it may be disclosed for political reasons tied to Taiwan's upcoming elections. Lai stated that China should not put pressure on Taiwanese companies during elections and emphasized the need to cherish and treasure Taiwanese firms. Warning that such actions could lead to a loss of confidence and shift in production elsewhere. The probe is seen as potentially influencing the election outcome, with Terry Goh, Foxconn's founder, running as an independent candidate for president. The Chinese government stated that Taiwanese companies should assume social responsibilities and play a positive role in promoting peaceful cross-strait relations. This statement comes amid China's tax and land use investigations into Foxconn, a major Apple supplier, which has been highlighted by Taiwan's presidential candidate, Lai ching -te, as an example of Chinese election interference and pressure on Taiwanese corporations. While China did not officially confirm the investigations, a spokesperson for China's Taiwan Affairs Office emphasized that Taiwanese enterprises should play a positive role while enjoying development benefits on the mainland. The comments signal China's expectation for these companies to contribute positively to political developments. Terry Go, the billionaire founder of Foxconn and presidential candidate in Taiwan, has gone off the public stage after a Chinese newspaper reported a tax probe into Foxconn's operations in China. Go, who stepped back from Foxconn four years ago, has positioned himself as Taiwan CEO and aimed to unite the opposition amid tensions with China. The Global Times suggested that China was unhappy with Go running for president. Believing it would split the opposition vote and favor Taiwan Vice President Lai ching -te. Go's team has declined to comment on the probe, referring questions to Foxconn. Canada and Taiwan have concluded negotiations on a bilateral deal aimed at boosting foreign investment. The foreign investment promotion and protection arrangement is part of Canada's strategy to increase its influence in the Indo-Pacific region. The move comes as Taiwan seeks greater support from major Western democracies amid growing pressure from China. Taiwan's government hopes the deal will help its bid to join the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership CPTPP. The deal will be signed once administrative procedures, including legal reviews, are completed.
The Canadian government has identified a China-linked spamouflage campaign that deployed bots to post disinformation and propaganda on social media accounts of members of parliament, including Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. The campaign, which occurred in August and September, involved thousands of comments in English and French accusing lawmakers of criminal and ethical violations, spreading conspiracy theories, and sharing deepfake videos. The government worked with social media platforms to remove the bot networks. The Chinese embassy in Canada denied interference and called the accusations a blatant smear campaign. According to Ukraine's defense intelligence, Russia has concentrated around 400,000 soldiers on the territory of Ukraine. The representative of defense intelligence of Ukraine, Andriy Yusov, stated that there are sufficient forces for separate operations on various sections of the front, emphasizing that the group of Russian invaders in Ukraine's occupied territories exceeds 400,000 personnel. Yusov mentioned the presence of a significant amount of Russian military equipment in Ukraine and noted that new weapons would be recommissioned and delivered to the front. While mobilization is ongoing in Russia, Yusov ruled out a repetition of the scenario seen in February 2022 but acknowledged that the enemy might attempt separate offensive operations in certain areas. Russian forces launched 11 Shahid Kamikaze drones over Ukraine on the night of October 25, and all of them were successfully intercepted by Ukrainian air defense forces. The drones were launched from the southeast, Primorsko-Oktarsk, Russia, on the night of October 24 to 25. Ukrainian air force, fighter aircraft, anti-aircraft missile units, and mobile fire groups were deployed to repel the air attack in various regions. In response to the drone attacks, Ukraine reported a total of six missile strikes and 51 airstrikes, with 66 instances of firing from multiple launch rocket systems at Ukrainian positions and populated areas. The targeted areas included settlements in Chernihiv, Sumy, Kharkiv, Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, and Kherson oblasts. The attacks resulted in casualties among the civilian population and caused damage to residential buildings and infrastructure. In a video address to a security conference in Prague, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky affirmed his commitment to maintaining military pressure on Russian-occupied Crimea. Technical glitches and potential hacking affected the video presentation. Zelensky claimed success in breaking the illusion of Russia's dominance in Crimea and the Black Sea, stating that the Russian fleet is unable to operate effectively in the western part of the Black Sea. He noted Ukrainian achievements in targeting Russian forces in Crimea, including strikes on a Russian air base and a Black Sea Fleet Command post. The attacks showcased Ukraine's growing military capabilities. Zelensky acknowledged that full-fire control over Crimea and surrounding waters is a matter of time. The event faced technical issues, and the conference website reportedly experienced a hacking attack. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu inspected command posts of Russian troops in Ukraine's Donetsk region during a working visit close to the war's front lines. The visit was showcased in televised clips aimed at projecting confidence about the state of Russia's war inside Ukraine. Shoigu commended the efforts of the assembled servicemen, stating that they were reducing opportunities for Ukrainian forces. The Ukrainian counteroffensive in June captured villages in the east and south, though at a slower pace than the previous year's advance in the northeast. Russia has reportedly been heavily pounding the eastern city of Avdiivka, with Ukraine claiming significant losses among Russian forces. Shoigu emphasized improvements in Russian troops training with drones and urged commanders to ensure winter uniforms and insulated footwear for the upcoming colder weather. Five Myanmar nationals, residing in Australia, Britain, Canada, and India, have urged the Philippines to investigate alleged war crimes committed by ten current or former members of Myanmar's military against the mainly Christian Chin minority. Lawyers representing the Myanmar nationals lodged a criminal complaint against Junta Chief Min Aung Lane and others, accusing them of war crimes under Philippine law. The complaint alleges the killing of a pastor and two church elders, directing attacks on churches, and burning hundreds of houses in Phantlang Town, Chin, between August 2021 and June 2022. The group also accuses the military of blocking relief supplies after Cyclone Mocha in May. The United States has warned that it will defend the Philippines against armed attacks after Chinese Coast Guard ships were accused of intentionally hitting Philippine vessels in the disputed South China Sea. The incident occurred while Philippine ships were heading to the 2nd Thomas Shoal on a resupply mission. The U.S. National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan
reiterated support for the Philippines and emphasized the U.S.-Philippines mutual defense treaty commitments. Both China and the Philippines have accused each other of intentionally hitting their boats, marking the first such incident involving Chinese military vessels colliding with a Philippines resupply ship. A Philippine lawmaker, Franz Castro, has filed a criminal complaint against former President Rodrigo Duterte, accusing him of making a serious threat on her life during a TV interview. Duterte allegedly mentioned Castro's name and expressed a desire to kill communists during the interview. The complaint argues that Duterte's threats pose dangers to Castro's life, liberty, and security. Duterte, known for his controversial remarks during his presidency, is no longer immune from lawsuits as a private citizen. The complaint comes amid ongoing criticism of Duterte's daughter, Vice President Sarah Duterte, for seeking confidential funds in the 2024 budget. Australia aims to introduce legislation by the end of the year to expedite the implementation of the AUKUS agreement, which involves fielding a fleet of US-designed nuclear-powered submarines by the 2030s. The legislation aims to streamline information and technology transfers between the US and Australia. The AUKUS agreement, signed in September 2021, encompasses various security and technology aspects, with a primary focus on acquiring nuclear submarines. Both the US and Australia need to pass legislation to facilitate the smooth execution of the agreement, and Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is actively lobbying US lawmakers to support the process.